Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining the session. My name is Sabine M, and I'm going to go into developing a CRE growth mindset. One and a half years ago, I was giving a presentation at a customer networking event on advanced data analytics. And we went into um, corporate real estate value creation, where in the company um, corporate real estate contributes to overarching goals and um, value creation. And then we continued to have a look at corporate real estate performance measures. And the ones that you find here are the ones that are um, most predominant in the industry. And they are cost per square meter, cost per workstation, real estate cost per employee, employee per square meter, return of invest, you name it. Very much financially driven, looking at space efficiency goals and cost optimization. And that may very well be because in a lot of cases, corporate real estate reports into the finance organization. And also these numbers are kind of easy to obtain from the contracts, from the financial systems you have in place, and also from the floor plans. Now, what I said back then was if this were true, if this is everything there is that makes out corporate real estate success, I'd have a very simple solution to increase performance. And bear with me, little did I know back then, because I said, everybody work from home. You have no space consumption, no associated cost. Your um, metrics here are going to look amazing. Now, already back then, there was strong disagreement with it. And the past year has shown us all and make it very much graspable what the value of the office is in addition to these um, financially driven metrics. Still, if you look at the corporate real estate hierarchy of needs, the tools and technology and the measures in place, you will mostly find in the core needs section, which is around building operation and efficiency of building operation. Now, what I say is going forward, we will need to turn that pyramid upside down, having employee needs, around well-being, productivity, collaboration at the heart and center of what we do. And a lot of companies have started to go that route already. They have regular pulse checks with employees now. Some of them have been engaged in a leaseman index before. And that's the momentum that we need to keep going. Because Flexible work and activity-based working models are not new. They have been around since over a decade, but the adoption was rather happening slowly. That might be because you did it on a project basis, so only touch the work environment when there anyways was a project underway. But also there has been resistance for cultural reasons, for political reasons. And there was a lot of prejudice around um, flex work. Now the past year has driven the adoption rate up by force. And what we learned from this is on the one hand, it does work. Um, it does work in a set of areas and we've also learned about the limitations of where it doesn't work but what we can't tell yet is what is the best environment for the future simply because we did not have the opportunity to test it properly and if we look at the occupancy data so here we have been looking at our customers portfolios around the globe um, you see, there is not really a trend or something that you can make out. And that is because in a lot of places, there are still very strict regulations in place that you need to abide by. And also, I think um, we don't have come to a normalcy yet. And I'd expect actually that if we are opening offices now, or um, hopefully soon in the future. Again, then there might be a spike in office utilization because people are 
dire to meet their colleagues again, to connect with everyone for a setting change as well. And then what I've um, actually seen with myself is there is um, kind of a seasonality in my behavior. So in winter, I would go to the office because there was an actually much more um, attractive options around. In the spring, I really got a kick out of working on the balcony, for example, when um, my tasks allowed for that. Um, and also what will be a factor is that if you provide new environments, curiosity might drive people to the office as well to test it out. That's something I experienced a lot of times with pilots that people will go and just want to check out what's provided there and then kind of drive the utilization up for a limited period of time. So again, I think the answer to the question, what the office needs to be, is to be found in a long haul. And it will be found through iterations. And in that sense, corporate real estate needs to adapt kind of a retail or marketing mindset of failing fast, of implementing new things, of implementing bold change, and then seeing in the data, and actually in a set of data, and I'll go into that a bit more later, um, if the adoption is there, if this is something that um, is an attractive environment to employees that makes them want to come to the office. And that change of corporate real estate is already underway. We took um, a survey of corporate real estate executives in the US at the beginning of the year. And what we learned there is that while operational tasks have grown in the past year, because overnight, CRE needed to partner up with HR and IT to bring equipment to people at home to make sure everybody could work remotely, while um, ensuring safety and compliance on site with utilization thresholds and still keeping buildings and maintenance schedules running, their strategical influence has grown very much as well. The question of the future office is on many people's minds. It is across the media, a very um, heated argument. And the attention span has increasing, has been increasing tremendously. Now, sadly, at the same time, the challenges of corporate real estate have remained the same. In a lot of cases, um, CRE doesn't have budgetary sign-off, which limits them in the actions they can implement in uh, getting the tools that they need in making the change that they want because they have to convince other stakeholders first. And consequently, lack of stakeholder buy-in is mentioned as a major challenge as well. And in that stakeholder buy-in, a lot of times politics plays a big role as well, which makes it sometimes painful to have these discussions because they're not necessarily drawn from, from reasonable arguments, but from preference. And then something that has also come more into focus is that going forward, and again, it's not completely new, but employees are expecting an increased flexibility and a more attractive offering when it comes to the workplace. Because if you do not provide it, you will lose your talent or you won't be able to attract it. Now, um, while the question of what the purpose of the office is going to be is still out in the open, um, I do understand that um, leases are coming to an end and decisions need to be made now. So that's why I think it's increasingly important to draw back on data and to up the data analytics game in corporate real estate so that you can use the data points that you already have for scenario planning in the future. So what you have to start now is to look at what are the data points in the corporation that you could exploit already for that purpose and where the gaps are? And at the same time, and I'm tapping again into that mindset changes, um, 
corporate real estate needs to build the skills to interpret the data, to build the right narrative around it. Because data without that storytelling is just a lot of numbers that might not necessarily make sense. And that not necessarily will lead you to the right conclusions. And I want to make here a practical example of our own office space. Now, we've been measuring utilization for a while, so that's why I can present you here the full timeline of 2020. And prior to the pandemic and the first lockdown, um, we were debating whether we needed to acquire additional office space because you see it here, our peak utilization was at 100%, and that happened quite regularly that we hit that capacity limit. Now, if you look at the peak utilization, then after the first lockdown, we were allowed to go back into the office um, in late summer, peak utilization hit again 97%, which might lead you to say, oh, pretty much back to normal. Now, if you look at the average utilization, you see there has been a change and the timeline gives it away as well. Um, we went from 50% average utilization to 30%. So that's a significant drop. And then what really makes the difference in the storytelling is that actually during the lockdown, um, we have increased staff. So that's why the per employee peak utilization went down from 100% to 65% because we did increase the sharing ratio. And then I'm going to throw in another factor, which is the 97% peak utilization, and I know that because I've been around, happened on the day um, where we had an outdoor barbecue for the company. So again, without um, bringing data points and also location knowledge together, you would not be able to come to the conclusion. And for, for here to make it complete, it is we will not have to acquire new office space um, anytime soon. We can stay in the setting that we are. What does that mean um, now for the quantified workspace? It means that you have to build a data set that takes into consideration different areas. It's HR data, employee survey data, it's the utilization data, and it's also the specifications um, of the act architectural quality within buildings, uh, of the setting that you actually provide. And then it's also knowledge from on the ground that needs to come into the mix to triangulate the information available and then draw conclusions from there and also do benchmarking across your locations and also with peaks. Because that's something what I um, believe will help us all is to stick together and see where we have commonality. I still think that um, the future um, office will have flavors for different companies. But I think across, um, across stuff, there is to be found common ground as well. And this then, this quantified workspace should help corporate real estate to in the future still and increasingly contribute to the various areas of value in the company. Now, uh, I note that 15 minutes are a short time span to dive into that. I hope you could get something out of it for you. Uh, happy to connect and continue the conversation. Thank you.